Some people know their eye color without thinking. Blue, brown, green, done. Hazel eyes don't work that way. They're green in daylight, brown indoors. Gold under a camera flash. Photos argue with mirrors. People argue with you. And even DNA tests struggle to name what your own face carries. Eye color is supposed to be fixed. That's the rule. Hazel eyes follow it, while breaking it at the same time. If you're drawn to stories where biology refuses clean answers, subscribe to Stone and Bow. Because hazel eyes are not just a color. They're a problem nature never fully solved. Hazel eyes built their reputation on inconsistency. In open daylight, green tones rise to the surface. Under warm indoor light, brown settles in. A camera flash strips the subtlety away and pulls gold straight out of the iris. Most people assume this means the color is changing. It isn't. What's changing is the way light enters the eye, how wide the pupil is, and how different layers of the iris scatter that light back out. Hazel eyes sit in a narrow middle zone. Enough pigment to absorb some wavelengths, not enough to block others. Small shifts in lighting exaggerate that balance. It's the same optical effect that makes the sky look blue without containing blue pigment at all. The contradiction begins here. Hazel eyes don't change, but they also never look stable. If someone has ever told you your eyes were green yesterday and brown today, you weren't witnessing confusion. You were watching physics interfere with biology. Drop a comment if you've had to explain your own face to someone else. The confusion deepens once labels enter the conversation. Hazel is not a precise scientific category. It's a compromise. A word we use when an eye refuses to sit still long enough to be classified cleanly. Some systems fold amber into hazel. Others separate it. Eyes with a brown ring near the pupil and green at the edges might be labeled hazel, or they might be called central heterochromia, depending on who's doing the labeling. Even clinicians don't always agree. That's why statistics around hazel eyes feel slippery. Prevalence depends on definitions, methods, and whether classification is based on self-report, photographs, or clinical examination. Biology works on gradients. Humans prefer boxes. In Celtic folklore, the hazel tree symbolized wisdom gained at boundaries and thresholds. That symbolism fits better than it should. Hazel eyes live at a boundary too, between categories that never fully separate. If one person calls your eyes hazel and another insists they're green or brown, the disagreement isn't personal, it's structural. For a long time, eye color was taught as simple. Brown dominates. Blue recedes. End of story. That explanation collapsed once genetics stopped pretending traits were binary. Eye color is controlled by multiple interacting genes. Some regulate how much pigment is produced. Others influence where that pigment is deposited across the iris. Hazel eyes usually appear when melanin levels land in a narrow middle range. Not enough to become fully brown. Too much to appear green. That balance is unstable. Shift pigment distribution slightly and perception flips. Two people can share similar genetic variants and still present different eye colors depending on how those genes express themselves. This is why hazel doesn't follow clean inheritance patterns. Two brown-eyed parents can have a hazel-eyed child. Two hazel-eyed parents can produce brown, green, or hazel. Hazel isn't inherited as a color. It's inherited as probability. And probability makes people uncomfortable. Modern genetics can predict an unsettling amount from a DNA sample, hair color, skin tone, often eye color. These systems work best when traits fall into clean categories. Blue, brown, sometimes green. Hazel is where the confidence breaks. Because hazel sits between extremes, DNA prediction models frequently flag it as intermediate, ambiguous, or misclassified. The genes involved don't switch traits on or off. They fine-tune them. And fine-tuning resists single labels. Here's the part most people misunderstand. This isn't because the science is sloppy. It's because the models were trained on simplified outcomes, not biological gradients. 
Prediction systems are built to answer questions humans ask, not to reflect how nature actually works. And humans prefer certainty. Hazel offers none. In practice, this means a DNA profile might confidently label someone's eyes as brown or green, while a human observer sees something far more complex. Hazel exposes a design limitation, not a scientific failure. And that leads to an uncomfortable realization. Your own DNA can describe you less clearly than a stranger's glance. Pause on that. Up to this point, Hazel eyes seem stable in one sense. Illusions created by light. Complex genetics doing quiet work. Then medicine steps in and breaks the rule everyone trusts. There are prescription eye drops used to treat glaucoma that can permanently darken eye color. And the people most affected are those with mixed or hazel eyes. Not temporarily. Not cosmetically. Permanently. Over time, these medications can increase pigment production inside the iris. Lighter areas darken first. Greens fade. Gold deepens. Some hazel eyes slowly shift toward uniform brown and never return. Doctors warn patients about this, but the warning often sounds abstract, clinical, easy to dismiss. Until it happens, a medication meant to protect your vision can quietly erase the color you were born with. For some people, the change feels trivial. For others, it feels like losing something personal, something tied to identity rather than appearance. And medicine doesn't pause to negotiate that loss. Its priority is sight, not symbolism. Eye color is not supposed to change until chemistry forces it to. If that thought makes you uneasy, it should. Hazel eyes don't appear randomly across the world. They cluster in regions shaped by long histories of population mixing. Places where lighter and darker pigmentation systems met, overlapped, and never fully replaced one another. Southern and Western Europe parts of Anatolia, the Middle East. Regions defined less by isolation and more by movement, trade, and repeated migration. Hazel doesn't dominate these areas. It persists within them. Roman poets once described hazel-eyed women as both fierce and gentle, caught between warmth and restraint. That poetic tension mirrors the biology. Hazel is not an extreme. It's a blend that never resolved into one side. If you have hazel eyes, your ancestry likely reflects that same pattern, not a single origin, but layers stacked over time. From an evolutionary standpoint, hazel eyes are neither optimal nor harmful. Dark eyes offer better protection in high ultraviolet environments. Light eyes spread through bottlenecks and founder effects in lower light regions. Hazel sits between those pressures. It doesn't block the most light, it doesn't reflect the most light. That means it's rarely selected for aggressively, but it's also rarely selected against. Hazel survives not because it's superior, but because it's flexible. Rarity plays its own role. Traits that remain uncommon attract attention without becoming dominant. They persist quietly, generation after generation. Hazel doesn't win evolution's race. Hazel doesn't lose it either. It lingers in the middle, Hazel eyes expose something deeper than pigment. They reveal the limits of classification, the places where biology refuses to simplify itself for our convenience, where traits exist as negotiations between genes, light, history, and chance. They confuse cameras. They destabilize statistics. They challenge DNA prediction systems. They can even be altered by medicine. If you're drawn to stories where science complicates rather than comforts, Subscribe to Stone and Bone. This channel is built for people who don't stop at the first explanation. And if you have hazel eyes, share where you're from in the comments. Not as trivia, but because patterns emerge when enough individual stories collide. Hazel eyes aren't just a color. They're a boundary nature never bothered to resolve.